Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar dedicated entirely to the latest native script release. My name is Valus Stoichev and I'm the PM lead for the project. Today together with our developer evangelist J. Van Tow and the other PM on the team Kirill Stanoev, we'll walk you through the latest additions in native script and we'll show you the road ahead. The native script engineering team is also here to answer any questions you have during the webinar. So please use the webinar application to ask questions or simply to give us feedback on the things we're shipping. We will try to answer as many questions as possible in the next one hour. At the end of the webinar, we also have a dedicated Q&A panel. If you have any technical difficulties or internet problems, please note that the webinar will be recorded and the recording will be available later on our website. Now let's get started. This is the second month after we released the first public V1 of NativeScript, and the team here is excited to see how many people are attracted by NativeScript. There are more than 4,000 people on GitHub, and more than 2,300 people follow the project on Twitter. Today, there are more than 20 plugins created by the community, and they're all available to you. You can find all the available plugins on npmgs.org by searching for NativeScript. During these two months, we are also working with the Google Angular team on the integration of their next version of Angular inside NativeScript. As you can see from the slide, the Angular integration is one of the top features our customers were asking. The integration bits will be distributed as a separate NativeScript plugin and will enable you to use the full power of Angular inside a NativeScript application. It's important to note here that using Angular is optional, and if you prefer not to use additional application frameworks on top of NativeScript, then simply you don't need to include them in your app, and you will be able to use the core NativeScript functionality without embedding Angular in your application. Kirill is, Kirill is going to give you more insights on the, to this partnership at the end of this talk, but if you are interested on Angular, I wanted to invite you to the official Angular conference in Europe, Angular Connect. It will take place in London at the end of October and we'll have a dedicated session. It's expected that, that by then the Angular integration inside NativeScript will be finished and it will be ready to be used in production applications. Now let's get back to NativeScript 1.2 release and the things we shipped last week. In NativeScript we are working in two tracks in parallel. First, bringing the best development experience so that you are able to create your application faster and second bringing the best user experience of the application which will allow to, de to deliver the exceptional applications to your users now let's see first what improvements we did on the developer experience on the developer experience track we are shipping several major ed additions the live sync feature and the app inspector for ios with the live sync feature, you no longer need to recompile and redeploy your application to the emulator or to the device when you are working on the application. In the native script tooling will monitor the application folder for any changes and will deliver those changes immediately to the running application. With this release, when changes are deployed on the device, the application will reload and you will be able to see the code changes applied. With the next release, we are going to improve this experience even more by just refreshing the current application screen and not reloading the whole application to see the changes. The changes. TJ will show you this feature in action in several minutes. The second major addition in the developer tools in this release is the App Inspector for iOS. As the App Inspector is a big project for us and we will continue to invest a lot into it. In this release, we're shipping the debugging and profiling tools for iOS. You'll be able to inspect the current state of the variables, set breakpoints, and fully debug your application. You'll also be able to record the application execution and to later profile and optimize all the JavaScript code during the runtime. The next feature that are planned for the developer tools are the visualization and editing of the visual tree at runtime debugging and editing the CSS styles, monitoring the HTTP requests, and viewing the local storage of the application. This will be initially available for, for iOS only, but of course, we'll also be looking for ways to enable the same debugging experience for Android. 
If you have any feedback on the developer experience in NativeScript, please let us know. Ask a question using the control panel of the GoToWebinar or directly open an issue in GitHub so that we can have a conversation there. On the user experience track, we are also shipping some significant improvements. First of all, we extended our plugin support to enable you to use native iOS and Android libraries as part of the plugin package. Now we can use native libraries for iOS and Android and to create a cross-platform JavaScript API for accessing the native capabilities. We believe that the plugins are a very convenient way to extend NativeScript. A NativeScript plugin is essentially an NPM package which is installed by a single command to your application. This way, instead of writing code that is a common case, you'll be able to use a plugin which someone else has created and shared with the community. As I mentioned in the beginning, there are now more than 20 plugins available. We believe that with the introduction of the native capabilities, there will be much more plugins that will deliver exceptional user experience. There is nothing stopping you now from using the native Google, Facebook, Facebook or any other third-party native SDKs in your application. A good example of such plugin, and something I'm sure that you're going to have, is the freshly, freshly released UI component suite, which we call Telerik UI for NativeScript. With this preview release, we are shipping two essential components for mobile development, a fully featured and customizable side drawer component and a whole new data visualization suite, which will solve any line of business application needs. There are Pi, Bar, Wine and Area Charts, and we also support financial series, annotations, data virtualization and many more features. The data visualization suite is ready for prime time and if you need charts for your application, I'm sure you'll be very, very, you'll be very pleased to explore all the features that we shipped here last week. I also want to remind you that these are all native components and the user experience is pure native. In the next iteration of the component suite, coming in September, we will introduce several other important components. We will deliver a calendar, an advanced list view component and a suite of data entry components. The data entry components are especially interesting because they are entirely data driven, driven, meaning that you can generate an input form entirely from a data model. In the data form will also support a, de a declarative data validation. Now I'm going to open the demo application and show you some of the capabilities of these components. We are working internally on a sample application which will show all these new components. I have the internal version of this application opened in the Gini Motion Emulator. Let's start with the side drawer component. As I mentioned before, side drawer is a very advanced and extensible component. You can host any co content inside in this component. As you can see here, we are showing four links but you can show literally any content that is available in native script. You can, you can set the component open from any side of the screen and you, you are also able to specify different animation animated transition. Let's play a bit with this demo. As you can see here, we have several predefined transitions. Let, let me show you the review transition. The review transition will slide the main content and will open the side row in instead of that content. You can specify the position on which the side row will open. You can open it from above, you can open it from below, or you can open it from the left on or the right side of the screen. And you can combine all these open positions with the transition of your choice. Let's see for example the fall down transition with and open the sidebar from below. The next component I want to show is the charging component. As I mentioned before, we support the charging component is a is a full set of data visualization components. There are many series supported. If we support uh, the major series, wine area, bar, and pie series, and also the more sophisticated scatter 
and financial cities. We also support multiple access annotations and indicators. And as the primary goal of this component is to be used with on the on the mobile devices, we also support a lot of interactivity features. I want to show you, for example, the pan and zoom feature, which allows you to to drill down into the chart chart data. It's a little bit hard here on the, on the emulator to achieve the pan and zoom gestures, but as you can see, you can you can uh, zoom the, the data and you can you can pan it and you can also resume to the original screen. And all these features are available, of course, for all the for all the uh, series. Let me show you a little bit more the bar series here as you can see you can have multiple data in in the bar series you can have stacked series as displayed here and you can also display the the bars horizontally or vertically it's also interesting to see the pi series we support the standard bar series with labels and we also support the, the so-called uh, donut donut series. And the next components that we will be shipping in September are the data form component which I was previously talking about. And the data form component is a uh, is a collection of data entry components that are very important for every mobile application. And as you can see here we support some validation out of the box. You can set uh, the validation is done in a declarative way. You can set an annotation to your to your data, and the data form will automatically pick up the annotations and uh, display validation information for for the required fields. And the next component that we are going to ship in September is the. Um, calendar component. Let me just find it here in the on the demo application. So, oops, we have a little crash here. Uh, so the calendar component is an advanced calendar component which supports range selection and inline events, and of course, it's support different modes and transitions. You can see here you can. You can have appointments uh, for every day of the of the calendar. Uh, let me show you also the different views. As we, as you can see here, we have the the early view, the month view, and the week view of the component. You'll be able to to export this this component in September when we ship the demo. And the last component we are going to ship in September is the list view component. As you know, we already have a list view component as part of the native script framework, but uh, with Telerik UI, we are shipping an advanced list view component, which supports different different layouts, item reorder, horizontal scrolling selection, and also different gestures. And let me show you very quickly the horizontal layout for the list view component. This is this horizontal layout was requested by several customers so far. So I think in September you will be very happy to see the component in action. Now let's get back to the slides to see what other user experience improvements we delivered with the 1.2 release. First we added several new CSS properties. As you can see here we mostly implemented the background CSS properties and the font properties and the border border properties. These were all requested by many people from the community and I think that they are core CSS functionality and part of native script. If you want to see more CSS additions please walk initial on GitHub and we will evaluate it. 
The next thing we implemented as part of 1.2 release is the HTML view. What we saw in the previous months is that there are many developers who are trying to use the web view component to render HTML with native script. This of course leads to not very optimal native user experience because having a web view in your application has significant delay and is breaking the native performance. Now with the HTML view component you no longer need to use web view to show a simple static HTML. The HTML is rendered by the native operating system and, is, and we are not using web view internally. It supports limited set of HTML tags and renders only static HTML content. There is no JavaScript allowed. And this can be really useful if you want to render a formatted string into the page content. The last thing I want to share with you before I give the mic to TJ is to show you our sample applications which our team created for warning purposes. These applications are fully functional and are showing how you can achieve common application scenarios with native script. Let me now open the web browser to show you. You can find all, all the samples on our website by clicking on the samples link. As you can see here we have uh, the friends application, the tasks application and the Trellic conference application. They, all, all these applications come with full source code that is part of GitHub and you will be able to run and explore the, the source code inside this application. So we are also working on two other applications that we are going to release next week. So I think you now have a lot of resources to to warn native script from. Now I want to give the mic to our developer evangelist TJ who will show you some real demos and how all these new features fits together. TJ, the floor is now yours. Awesome, thanks Valio. As Valio said, I'm TJ. I'm from Lansing, Michigan, which is a place you've probably never been. I work here in the middle of Michigan for Telerik and with the native script team and I have the pleasure today of showing off a few features that we've shipped in the last two native script releases. That is 1.1, which shipped about four or five weeks ago, and 1.2, which landed last week. I'm going to show off these features by building a small little native script app so you can see how these features work in action. And I'm going to start with the top item on this list, and that's using NPM modules. Now, the native script framework has really always supported using NPM modules, or the 170,000 of them is really native script code is just JavaScript code. So really there's never been anything stopping you from using any of these modules, um, as long as they don't use certain APIs that won't be available in native script, things like browser APIs or certain node APIs as well. But as of the native script 1.1 release, we've added a few features to make NPM modules a lot easier to use. I wanna actually show this off in action. And because I know a lot of the people here today are build very serious apps, they build apps for governments and banks and businesses and such, I wanted to add something serious, something that people could actually use in their production apps. And that's why we're going to start today with a knock knock jokes module. Obviously, I'm kidding some, but I am actually going to use this module. And I'm going to do so for two reasons. The first is because I think simple APIs are a great way to show a concept. And it doesn't get much simpler than this API that the knock knock jokes module has. And also, the second reason is because you can't tell me you're not interested in what this module actually does. So I'm going to build a little app that uses this. And to do that, I'm going to head over to the command line and run TNS create. I'll call this little app knock knock. Head into it, not head into hello world. We'll head into knock knock. I'm actually going to remove some of the starting template files here because I want to start from scratch. And then I'm going to head into the app itself. As of NativeScript 1.0, when you start an app, when you use TNS create, NativeScript actually uses a package.json file. And you can see here it's at the moment just being used to store, store the app ID. But if you're familiar with how NPM and how Node works, you'll also know that a package.json file is what NPM uses to store your app's dependencies. And to add a dependency, you use the npm install command. So if we head back over here, I'm going to paste in npm install, the name of the module, knock knock jokes. And I'm also going to include the dash dash save flag. 
Now what this flag does is when I actually do the install, NPM knows to add a dependency to my apps package.json, and you can see the knock knock joke module appears here. The knock knock jokes module also appeared in this apps node modules folder, which NPM added here. And the cool thing about this dependencies being stored here, and if you're already familiar with, with sort of how NPM works, you probably already know this, but because the dependencies here, I could actually just get rid of this node modules folder altogether and run npm install on my app to get this folder regenerated at any time. Because of that, node modules is commonly excluded from source control. You'll see it in .git ignore files, for instance. Now that this module is installed, we'll want to use it. So I'll head back to the command line and I'm going to create a little jokes file, which is going to be used as the interface to sort of show these jokes. I'm going to go into my app.js file because I got to change the main module to that little jokes page I just built up. Save that. We'll go into the XML file here. I'm going to paste in just a really simple UI here. Stack layout. I'm just going to stack up two things. A button that's going to be used to generate a joke and a label that's actually going to show the joke. I'm going to get a little two column layout going here in Sublime and actually open the JavaScript that's going to be used as a code behind file here and paste in the JavaScript that makes up the back end here. Now with these two together, you can see that the loaded attribute here ties to the loaded event in the JavaScript file, again, using CommonJS. And the labels text, or this double curly syntax here, is actually gonna be tied to this view model here. So if I wanna set the joke or what appears there, all I have to do is call set and set the joke here. And the question is, well, then what do I set this to? because this is the part where we actually have to use the module. To do so, I can actually just follow the documentation that's available on NPM. I can actually just directly copy and paste this in here at the top, although I am not a fan of single quotes, so I will take the extra second to change that. And you'll also remember that this module had a super simple API, so I can just type it in here and save it. To actually run this app, I got to go back to the command line. I have to add the iOS and Android platforms if I want to run these apps on each of those platforms. So I'm going to run for iOS and run for Android as well. And then use the TNS run command to actually deploy this. I'm going to deploy this to my iPhone here. Now while this is running, I want to show you one thing that the NativeScript CLI is actually doing. You'll note that the node modules were installed at the root level of this project. So it's really not sitting alongside your application code, which is sitting in the app folder. But when you run the app, the CLI actually takes these files in the, the root node modules folder and actually copies them to the appropriate places. They really need to be at runtime. So if I dig in here into my TNS modules folder within the app, you can see that the knock knock jokes folder gets moved here. And that's what makes it accessible to this require method the same way that any of the built-in native script modules are as you can see this observable being brought in here the app has finished running so i'm going to drag it over here and you can see i have this really incredible ui i can get a joke and that's it <laughs> i just see knock knock here now i'm not sure especially when i was first doing this whether this was a bug in the module whether this was a bug in my code what's going on but NativeScript now offers me a few different tools that I can use to debug this sort of thing. Now, the first thing I could do is I could come down here and add some console log statements. Like I could log out what's the value of knock, what's the value of knock knock here. And as of NativeScript 1.0, those logging statements will actually get directly ported over here to the terminal that I ran the run command from. But I want to show off one command. But I want to show off a command you might not know is in NativeScript, and that's the TNS debug command. I'm actually going to run this for Android, and I'm going to pass the debug, if I can spell it correctly, the debug break flag, which just tells NativeScript to set a breakpoint on really the very first line of code in the app to sort of give you a chance to set up your breakpoints and such before your app execution actually starts. Now, while that's running, I'm going to take a second or two and get out my Android screen mirror here. I've got my Nexus 4 with me today and I'm going to drag that over here and it looks like this is ready now. So I have my debugger open here which opened up in my Chrome install and you can see that I now have this breakpoint just sort of at the very beginning of my file. I'm actually going to pause through this so I just see the default UI show up here in a second when it finishes running. And what I'm actually interested in is this knock knock call here. So I'm going to set a breakpoint go back to my Android device. I'm going to click the button here. 
which stops me on this breakpoint. So this gets me the ability to sort of figure out what's wrong here. Why am I not seeing this joke? What is this function actually returning? So I'm going to go down to the console and type knock knock. And because of this debug tooling, and because I got to run this example earlier today, I actually know what the problem is here. You'll see that there are new line characters being used in the data that's being returned from this function. So I'm actually going to get out of this, close this out, and I happen to know a pretty decent solution for this. The label UI component in NativeScript actually takes a text wrap attribute. So if I set this to true, the joke then should wrap around to different lines. So I'll save this, and normally, if you've been working with NativeScript, you might know that, generally speaking, after you change your code, you'd go back to the command line, and you'd say TNS run again, and you'd pass this off to your Android or your iOS device. But one thing we've introduced in the latest 1.2 release is this live sync command. So what I can do instead is tell, say to TNS live sync, and I'll go back to my iOS device. Now what this will do is push out just the application code out to my device and not go through the entire build step again, which is a far faster development workflow. And I change the text wrap here, so I will bring my device back up so you can see this change actually get pushed out. Now right now, as you'll see there, live sync actually reloads the app. It'll kick the app off and turn it back on again and see that now we get an amazing joke rendered on my iPhone. One thing we're working on, and if you go to the NativeScript CLI on GitHub, github.com slash NativeScript slash NativeScript CLI, is we're sort of actively working on making live sync smarter so it can do more of a hot reload of changing just the files that changed so that your app doesn't have to actually restart. But I think you'll find that live sync leads to a far faster development workflow than what we had before, especially on Android devices. Now, I do want to show a more serious module as part of this. Although I hope you enjoyed seeing the Knock Knock Jokes module, I do want to show one that actually is more useful. And so I'm going to show how to use Moment.js, if I go back over to my tab here, as part of a NativeScript app. If you've ever tried doing date and time formatting and parsing in JavaScript, well, then you have my sympathies. But Moment.js actually makes it quite easy. So I'm going to do that to show a little timestamp in this app. We'll show a little hour, minute, second display here. So to do that, as before with the Knock Knock Joke app, the first thing we need to do is actually install this module. Moment.js is actually just called Moment on NPM. Again, passing the save flag so that after this installation completes, the package.json actually stores that dependency on Moment.js here. In the jokes.xml, we'll actually add a label that'll just be used to store the timestamp. You can see that this CSS class syntax here, this is used to assign class names, CSS class names to individual elements. So if I go into my app.js file, or app.css file that is, one thing I want to do is make this timestamp stand out so I'll make it red and italic and push it away from the joke a little bit. So I will save this. I'll save the jokes.xml file as well. So the job of the JavaScript is just to fill this timestamp property the same way this joke property is being filled currently. To do that, we again have to require the module. In this case, I will require moment. Moment equals require, and it's just moment. And by the way, if you don't know what the name of the module is, you can always refer to the node modules folder here. You can see that in this case, it's just called moment. And when the joke is generated, I'm just going to cheat here and paste in a little code that includes a format string for moment.js. I'll save this, and I want to see what this looks like. Uh, but this time, I'm going to use the live sync command again. But I will also pass, oops, I'll set it for iOS. I'll also pass the dash dash watch flag. In addition to live sync, NativeScript now has basically a file watching mechanism that watches for changes in your projects and runs live sync as those changes happen automatically. Looks like those are getting pushed out, so I'll go back to my device here and we can see what this timestamp actually looks like. I will hit the joke button again, and you can see that I now get this wonderful timestamp that tells me exactly when I generated this spectacular joke. Because this watcher is set up, I can go back to my code. Let's say I just want to get rid of this sort of AM PM thing, which is what that A stands for. I save this file, and I don't actually have to do anything else, because if I go back to my watcher here, you can see that NativeScript is already working on pushing those changes out. And if I look at the device here, you can see it's launching the app. And I'll generate a joke here, and the AMPM marker is gone as well. So hopefully you've got to see a few different NPM modules, and hopefully it showed you just how easy it is to incorporate these things into your apps. The next thing I want to talk about is NativeScript plugins. 
which it sounds like a fancy term, but all native script plugins are, are NPM modules. They live on NPM with the added ability to execute native code and execute native code in terms of they can include the sort of native script iOS and Android syntax for invoking native APIs. And they can also do more robust things such as changing native configuration files such as Android manifests and info.plist as well as using Android and iOS SDKs. So to give you an example of this, if I head back over to, to my browser here, the NativeScript flashlight plugin, which is one that I've worked on, one of the things a flashlight needs is permissions on Android to use the camera. And as part of that plugin, I've included an Android manifest snippet where I'm able to request permissions from the camera directly within my plugin. The NativeScript push plugin is actually a more robust example of this as well, because if you dig into what it has to do on Android, it actually has to include a Android manifest snippet as well, but also a jar that is implemented as part of the plugin. And if we go back to iOS, you can see that it's actually using a framework as part of its implementation as well. If you want to use plugins, the process is actually quite similar because these things just live on NPM. The one difference is in the command you use to install them. So if I go back to the command line, whereas before I was running NPM install to install modules, this time I'm going to use the TNS plugin add command, which I'll paste in here. Now the plugin I actually want to use is the NativeScript social share plugin, also known as the NativeScript alliteration challenge. Because quite frankly, if you're generating spectacular knock-knock jokes like this, why wouldn't you want to share those amazing jokes with your friends? So I'm gonna run this install here. Now the process here is going to be basically exactly the same. Again, my package.json changed to include this dependency on the social share module. Again, the social share module appeared in the node modules directory. This plugin in particular actually doesn't include any Android or iOS specific configuration. So the plugin install is actually a little bit simpler, but the command would also, in the case of more complex plugins, go through the process of taking the jars and frameworks and such and installing them and putting them in the appropriate places to run in your application. As before with these modules, all I have to do is basically require and use them. So if I go back into my JavaScript code here, I'll paste in the code needed to import the social share module. The module has two methods. You can call share image and share text, and it'll invoke the platform specific native sharing widget. So the iOS sharing widget, the Android sharing widget as well. To actually show this, I'm going to show one of the new UI components that came with NativeScript 1.2, and that's the action bar widget. I'm going to head into my XML and right above this stack layout here, I'm going to paste in this action bar and expand this so we can see it a little bit better. The action bar just gives you a really convenient way of configuring things like the title of your app to show in the, the bar at the top of the screen, some action items if you want some buttons or, or icons up there. In this case, I'm just gonna show a simple button that just says share. The default is for iOS to be on the left. I actually want it to be positioned on the right, so I'm putting it here. I'm defining a share function on top of this action item, which means I actually have to handle that in my JavaScript code. So I'm going to paste in just a little bit of code that all it does is call share text, getting the joke that is set on the view model. So I'll save this, go back to my command line. I will live sync this to my iOS device. After that completes, you can see the app now has this action bar, the UI navigation bar here on the top of the screen with the title we set. There's also this share button that appears up here as well. And after I generate a joke, I can click on share. And this looks like this amazing joke is something I definitely want to share with value. So I will have to do that later. Or I could share it in one of many other ways that the, sh the Iowa sharing widget supports. But the cool thing here is just how easy it was to add this plugin, this reasonably complex piece of functionality into my app. Really, all I had to do was run a single command, require the module in my code, and then just call the modules API. Now, before I leave you today, I want to show you one more pretty fun module that I think fits into this app quite nicely. And that's the text to speech module. So I'm gonna head back to my CLI here and add native script text to speech. I'll go over to the XML here. I'm gonna be fairly lazy and then just below the timestamp, I'm just gonna add a button that's gonna talk to me. So I will add the speak button. In my JavaScript, I've shown a few times here before, all I really have to do is require the module. So this is the native script text to speech module. 
I added a speak function here, or a speak handler for the tap event on this button. So all I have to do is define it. I'll define the speak button here. I think I've saved all my files. So all I have to do is live sync this thing to my iOS device, which I'll do here. This will take a few seconds to actually prepare the plugin and ship it out. But when that does, and I'll get my iOS device ready here. And there it goes. I'll launch the app up here. Now I have the amazing ability to not only see a joke here, but also wait for it. Knock, knock. Who's there? Lettuce. Lettuce who? Lettuce in. It's cold out here. <laughs> Amazing. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what using NPM modules and native script plugins really gives you the power to do in a short amount of time. If you're wondering what plugins are out there for me to use, the best thing to do is actually go to NPM and search for native script. You'll find a bunch of different things out there. You can, for instance, vibrate your device, tie into SQLite, use the clipboard, use the phone, all sorts of other things. And also stay tuned for our upcoming plugin marketplace release. If you come go to plugins.telerc.com, you'll see that it's noted as coming soon. If you're familiar with our Cordova marketplace, you know that this marketplace is full of plugins that we Telerik have verified have worked and are ready for use in your apps. You can expect this to come out in the next few weeks. The best place to sort of watch out for an announcement of this is to follow the native script handle on Twitter. Now to talk more about what's coming in the future of NativeScript and future releases, I'm actually going to toss things over to my colleague, Kirill, who's going to take things from here. Kirill? Thanks, DJ, and uh, thank you all for taking the time to be with us today. My name is Kirill, and I'm part of the NativeScript product management team. In the remaining time, I'll share with you our plans for the next version of the NativeScript framework 1.3. And I'll also spend a few minutes uh, to tell you more about our joint collaboration with the Google Angular team. But first, let's see what's coming with um, 1.3. There is a lot actually on our uh, to-do list. Uh, some of the things we'll try to accomplish for 1.3 include adding new components to Teller UKI for NativeScript. Uh, we'll try also to improve the speed and performance of our um, layout system. We we'll try to provide uh, support for Cocoa Pods and also add a new cross-platform animation framework which will work equ equally well on both Android and iOS devices. Aside from this new stuff, uh, we'll continue working on these existing features such as um, the support for native libraries in the native script plugins. Uh, we'll continue working on the web inspector and we'll also um, add additional browser polyfills. Let's see in a little more detail what uh, each of these items is all about. So uh, we'll add four new controls to Telerik UI for native scripts. Um, these controls are a calendar, um, a list view, a data form, and a charting framework. A calendar a component which will allow you to enable daytime capabilities in your application. Some of the features um, this control will offer um, are week, month, and year views. It will also um, enable single, multiple, or range date selection. And we'll offer inline events. Um, these inline events are perfect if you want to provide an agenda for, for a certain date. Next on the list is the list view, um, a control I assume you're all familiar with. Um, the list view is perfect for working with large sets of data. But uh, aside from that, uh, let's see what other features the control will include. The control will be perfect uh, if you want to work um, and make sense of the data you're working with. It will expose uh, grouping, sorting, and filtering um, data operations. Also, it will um, offer three, um, three layout uh, mechanisms for arranging uh, list view items, uh, linear, grid, and uh, staggered layouts. If you're not familiar with the staggered layout, um, you can think of it as a Pinterest-like layout. Um, 
where each item has its um, own height and the layout mechanism of the list view respects um, this height when arranging the items. Another feature in the list view um, is reordering of items uh, through a tap and hold gesture. And finally, you'll be able to execute um, separate actions depending on whether the user uh, swipes left or right uh, on the list view item. This behavior is, was made uh, popular by the Gmail application. But that's not all. Um, the list view will also provide single and multiple selection, pull to refresh behavior. Of course, since it's a native component, it will provide native performance. And we also um, allow you to set header and footer. Next on the list um, is a data form component, uh, which uh, can be used if you want to edit uh, business objects during uh, runtime. Some of the features uh, the data form will provide. Uh, it will offer a default set of uh, editors for each uh, primitive data type, such as numbers, strings, and booleans. Uh, but we'll also um, offer an easy-to-use uh, mechanism for you to set your own custom editor if you, if you find the default ones are not, are not enough. The data form will also um, provide out-of-the-box uh, data validation. Uh, this will allow you to validate uh, the data that's been entered before committing it to the business object. And uh, we'll also provide value converters. Uh, these are when you want to convert from one type of property to another type. Also, it will offer editor relations. This is when uh, changing the value of one editor has, has effects um, on another. For example, uh, a practical case is when the user selects the country in which they live. Then another editor can, can be enabled and populated with the cities um, for the selected country. And finally, commit modes. Uh, commit modes uh, is basically a mechanism for you to say when the, the new data is committed um, to the business objects. Um, basically, it's um, either immediate or on lost focus of the editor, if the editor, for example, is a text view and manual when you decide to commit it in your code. The final component will include um, Intelli UI for a native script is a charting framework. Uh, it will offer all the popular variations like um, line charts, uh, column and bar series. You also have the opportunity to use area charts and of course mixing um, different chart types in, into, into a single view. Additional features of the chart uh, will include smooth pan and zoom um, scrolling, support for a trackball, a legend, and of course, data point uh, virtualization. Uh, that's all for the new components in Telerik UI for native script. Um, I would advise you to use the Q&A section to let us know which other controls you'd like to see included in the product. Next on the list for 1.3 are uh, improving the performance of our layout system. Uh, so how, how do we plan to do this? Um, we think of uh, moving uh, all the layout calculations to the native site and bringing uh, the marshalling calls between JavaScript and Java to a minimum. Um, our research so far has shown that um, you should not expect any public API changes uh, with this uh, optimization. Next, we'll um, work on supporting Cocoa Pots. Um, if you are not aware of what Cocoa Pot is, it's uh, basically Cocoa Pots is the dependency manager for Swift and Objective-C 
projects. Um, it has uh, tens of thousands of libraries which uh, once we enable this feature you'll be able to take advantage of. Uh, we'll also uh, include a cross-platform animation framework. Uh, with 1.3 you'll be able to animate properties uh, such as opacity, background, scale and rotate. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to set duration or delay and of course for which is typical for any animation framework you'll be able to set uh, easing curves. Finally from the new things we plan to include for 1.3 is um, app configuration files. Uh, you'll be able to configure properties about your application in files that will propagate the changes to the appropriate places in the platform specific config files. Um, it's basically what um, App Builder does with its uh, AB project file. Now let's, uh, let's uh, check what um, features we'll continue working on which, are, which were released with um, 1.2. Uh, we'll continue working on improving the support for native libraries uh, in native script plugins. Um, this will include the ability to package uh, resources in the plugin and define plugin variables, for example, API keys. And we'll also add support for static iOS libraries. Uh, we'll also continue investing um, in, the, in the web inspector. Um, in the page agent, uh, we'll add the ability to list all items in the app folder and uh, also you'll be able to set and hit a breakpoint on an item that has not been required yet, um, which was not previously available. We'll also um, start working on a DOM visualizer, um, which will allow you to explore the visual tree of the application. And finally, um, browser polyfills. Now that we have um, XML, HTTP requests and fetch API support, we'll continue with the next important polyfills which will allow you to use browser-based libraries in, in your native script applications. Some of these polyfills um, are WebSockets, WebGL, Canvas and notifications, but um, I'll strongly suggest that uh, you use the Q&A section uh, to, to tell us which polyfills you'd like to see implemented. So that's all we have planned for uh, 1.3. You can check the, uh, the roadmap page which is located uh, at natiscript.org slash roadmap for more information on each uh, feature. Also use our GitHub page to send us your suggestions. Now um, I'd like to tell you a bit more about um, our collaboration with uh, the Google Angular team. So as you know, Google has been working hard on the next version of Angular uh, with the idea of making the framework available to native script developers as well, uh, to native developers, sorry. Uh, this is a tough challenge since uh, Angular 1 was designed to work inside the browser. Um, so this push towards decoupling um, Angular from the browser has made it possible for us to start working on a compatibility layer that will allow developers to reuse their Angular skills when working with um, NetScript. Uh, we are currently at a stage where we support the Angular basics um, such as data bindings, uh, change detection and uh, way of writing the markup. Basically it's uh, everything to start working on a real world application. Uh, in the following weeks we'll have um, a hands-on example which we'll be able to share with the community. Um, I just want to mention that the, this integration will be optional for developers and also um, the timeline is tied to the Angular 2.0 timeline. And last, um, I'd like to tell you that um, <coughs> we'll be attending the Angular Connect um, conference this October in London. So um, if, you're, if you're going, uh, stop by and say hi. I uh, would be glad to chat with you. That's all for me, guys. Um, 
thank you very much for attending this webinar. We'll, I mean, we'll hang around uh, for a little while, so feel free to use the Q&A panel to send us your questions and feedback. Um, thank you for supporting NetiScript and enjoy the rest of the day. Bye.